Hi, I'm Lowell Joseph Gallen, and I'm here at the Hebrew University on Mount Scopus, the Mount of Olives. Is that what it's called in English? No, the Mount of Olives is the next mountain. Sorry about the Mount of Scopus. We're one yeah. mount over. Over. Mount Scopus is the English name. The Hebrew name is Harat Sophim, which means actually the Mount of the Watchers. And I'm here with our guest for this interview, Dr. Shalva Weil, who is one of the founders, in my opinion, and I think of many others, of Lost Tribe Studies, uh, a pioneer in the field of the study, the academic study of the subject of the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel. Is that a fair description? Absolutely. Okay. So, Shalva, um, if it would be okay, could we go back to, uh, well, before we go back to the beginning, how you got interested in this, I would ask you to comment on two subjects. One, that as each year goes by, there's more and more interest worldwide in the subject of the lost tribes of Israel, and as each year goes by, which is very strange to us Jews, more and more people worldwide claim there are lost relatives. Are both those statements true? I think both those statements are true. When I started um, studying the Ten Lost Tribes, uh, very few people were interested, and those who heard that I was studying it um, thought I was a bit nuts. Um, but nowadays everybody's going, gosh, yes, and um, my area of specialization at the time was India. And I would tell people I'm, um, I lived with the Jews of India for three years and I'm studying the Jews of India. And they'd say, are the Jews in India? And then I'd say, they call themselves Ben Israel, the children of Israel. And I explain that they're from the Ten Lost Tribes. And they're not the uh, children of Judah, they're the children of Israel who claim um, descent from the kingdom of Israel that was um, exiled by the kings of Assyria in the year 722 BCE. And um, people really thought that I had um, lost it. And nowadays they go, oh yes, we know this. And um, as for your second statement, that's also true. More and more people are um, claiming that they're lost Israelites. Uh, with a, Most of them with uh, the hope that they will eventually come and live in Israel. Now, in July, I attended a conference in Peter Maritzburg, which is near Durban, in South Africa. I'm on the board of the ISSAJ, which is the uh, International Society for the Study of African Jewry. And um, there were people there from the Cameroon, Congo, everywhere, Guyana. And everybody was saying, uh, Guyana's out of Africa, but, they, but he, he said he was of African origin. And everybody was saying that they are African Jews, but most of them were saying that they are lost Israelites and that they are coming back to the Jewish fold. In other words, that they originated in the Kingdom of Israel and they'd like to be reunited with Jews who are descendants of the Kingdom of Judah. And um, it was really a far out conference. And, it, and I was surprised because um, of all the exotic people who were there, I was the one who got the most press coverage. I was all over the papers, all over international press, saying, Dr. Sharbawal says millions of Africans claim Israelite descent. So, <laughs> I will tell, uh, I'd like to tell you and our viewers the first encounter I had with this subject, and then ask you, when was your very first encounter? For me, was it was sometime between 1980 and 1982, I was in the MA program in Jewish history at the Jewish Theological Seminary in New York City. Across the street is Union Theological Seminary, where I did some research on the history of Christian Zionism. And in the course of those interactions, I met a young a pastor who was an Igbo from Nigeria, the Christian Nigerians. Remember the war in Biafra, 1972? They wanted to be independent, and the Yoruba, the majority tribe, beat them up, and they didn't get their independence, and there were a lot of people who were killed. Uh, there was a lot of oil in where the Igbos are. Anyway, the Igbos are Christian, and the Igbos believe that they are descended from the lost tribes of Israel. This was my first encounter, because this young Igbo pastor 
was doing his doctoral dissertation on their traditions that they are descended from the lost tribes of Israel. I thrive on and specialize in ideas, the more far out the better. I love far out and weird ideas. The weirder and more far out the better. This was pretty far out, so I liked it immediately. That was my first encounter. Well, when did you yeah. first hear about this subject? Well, about the Eva specifically, I have a chapter in a recent book that came out called African Zion, and I've written about the Ethiopian Jews, namely the Beta Israel, who also claim that they're from the House of Israel. That's the phone ringing. We okay, will disregard so it. It's we'll okay. We'll disregard it. I'm so sorry. That's the phone. Don't pay I'm any attention. I'm so sorry. I didn't expect at this time in the evening when nobody's here. It's the okay. Will go. It, will, it will finish in a so, moment. So, um, either way, um, e we want e Yes, there was, um, there's a chapter in this book. After and I wrote, yes, on the uh, Israelite origins of the Ebos. And at my conference, there was also a lady from Paris who gave a paper on Israelite Ebos. Uh, I also um, supervised this year for an MA thesis a student at the Hebrew University who's a Yoruba from uh, Nigeria who also claims he's Israelite. The Yoruba? Yes, yes. We will also have to ignore that. Uh, cell now, phone. whoever's called on the house phone is moving to the cell phone. It's okay, let's continue. We're on the Yoruba. But I um, encountered the um, study of the Tenas tribes from a very early age. Uh, my father, uh, late father, he died a couple of years ago at the age of 100. Um, Your father lived to 100? Yes, yes. That's amazing. It yes. says in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 19 through 21, that in the future days, which we hope are now, the youngest will die 100. Yes, Amazing. I think that's true. People are living longer now. And he brought me up with all sorts of stories about different uh, Jewish communities. Not Igbos, but um, I knew, for example, from a very early age about the Falashas, whom we now call the Ethiopian Jews. And, um, in fact, in 1920s... He... They don't give up, do they? It's okay, we're in the 1920s. Uh, he sat in the synagogue um, on a... Um, a bench next to what he called two little black boys, and he did in, in England. In England. In England. In England. Um, at the synagogue. What? What city? London. In. Yes, I wait till this passes. In London, at the um, uh, Adas uh, synagogue, which was an ultra-orthodox synagogue. And he sat next to what he called two little black boys who, um, he didn't mean it in a racist way, that's how people talked in those days. And they were two um, children of the Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Jews, whom Dr. Faitalovich had brought to Rabbi Schoenfeld, this was his community, uh, to London to study in London. And then they went back to Ethiopia. So I knew about the two little black boys and the Falashas and the Ethiopian Jews. How, how old were you at this point? No, my, my father knew them in the 1920s. Okay. I was brought up with stories about right, them. Right, I see what you mean. Um, uh, today I'm, I'm working with uh, women of Caucasian origin from the Kafkazin, they're called in Hebrew, from Dagestan and the mountains. We used to call them the mountain Jews. Um, from one of the most remote corners of the former Soviet Union. Let's give a little footnote here. Uh, Kafkazistan, Dagestan, Kafkaz, Dagestan. Cauc Caucasian. Is uh, Caucasus. Armenia, Azerbaijan, the, between uh, Turkey and Russia and the Black Sea, and what's the sea on the other side? The Aral Sea? Some yeah. sea. Uh, is, is what Shalva is referring to. And Dagestan. Um, uh, traditionally, these Jews also claimed that they were from the lost tribes of Israel, but were then incorporated into the uh, corpus of uh, mainstream Judaism. This we're talking of, and there were, in fact, what we call Piskei Hanacha, there were questions to rabbis as to whether these people were Israelites or whether they were Jews. Um, and I'm working with them today. So it's, uh, my father would tell me all about these Caucasian Jews, and then when I met them, when I came to live in Israel in 1972, it was like... Um, a wonderful uh, enlightenment. Uh, but then I, uh, I actually came to live with the Ben Israel, the children of Israel from India, from Bombay, uh, whom I've mentioned already, 
who could possibly have been from the tribe of Zavolun because um, they were seafaring. And in fact, the way they got to India, according to their own story, is that their boat was shipwrecked in the sea. And because they were running away from Antiochus Epiphanes before Hanukkah festival, they went on a boat, they got on this boat, and then the boat was capsized near India. This reminds uh, me of this new film, The Life of P. Is that what it's called about the boy no. in the boat with a tiger, Richard Parker? Well, actually... Maybe in the next edition they'll throw in a Lost Tribes theme to that and they'll have a talisman to fill in with I've him or some other I've recently edited um, a book on India called Karmic Passages, Israeli Scholarship on India, with the, yeah, eminent, you go. With the eminent scholar Dr. Dave, uh, Professor David Shulman. And my chapter... Uh, that I wrote is on uh, Esther David, the Ben Israel novelist who grew up with a tiger. A real tiger? A real tiger. Her, her pet? Her pet. I've, I've got a picture well, of We it. have three dogs and three cats. We don't have any tigers this yet. This is Esther David. With her, with the, the tiger. With her. Let me just hold this little It's coat. amazing. No? This is Esther I want to David write to the and with her pet tiger. And I want to write to the um, people who made this film. Now her father was the zookeeper of Ahmedabad in, Ju in Gujarat. And he was a Jew, a Ben Israel, from the Indian group who are lost Israelites. Mm -hmm. And she became a very famous novelist. She won prizes recently. In fact, was my guest in Jerusalem a few months ago. Wow. And I wrote this chapter about her about three years ago. And look, is a, a little girl with a, a pet tiger. And it reminds me of this new, what is the film called? P? Life of P? P Life of something like something that. Something with yes, P. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, so that's reminded me of that. Amazing. Yes, yes. So you first heard about this subject from your father from stories which yes, were stories of, of yes. people he had actually encountered like the, yes. the children yes. in the synagogue. Yes. And how did you come to research it academically? Well first I began studying the men in Israel from, from India um, and I've always been fascinated by uh, the lost tribes and in 1978, I wrote an article for um, a newspaper, Jerusalem Post magazine, and I wrote about the lost tribes, particularly about the Patans, who are the largest tribal grouping in the world. They're 15 million people. They live in Pakistan and Afghanistan, and 40,000 live in Kashmir. And I wrote this article explaining that this huge tribe is divided into sub-tribes, with names like Rubeni, which reminds us of Reuven, and Ephrida, which reminds us of Ephraim. And they are divided into the ten um, lost tribes. And I personally interviewed in 1978 the Yusuf the sons of Yosef. And uh, when, uh, after I wrote this article, I got a phone call from um, a gentleman called Rabbi Avichail, who was interested in the lost tribes. And he said, let's go and find them. So I said, well, okay. Um, now, he'd never been abroad before at the time. After that, he became a frequent traveler. But um, at the time, he didn't even have a passport. Um, and then he was an Orthodox rabbi. He suddenly remembered that he couldn't actually travel with me to Afghanistan on an Israeli passport, which he then acquired. And he couldn't even travel alone with me as, a, a, as I was a married woman, and he was married, of course. And um, so we went out as a delegation, five of us. Uh, it included uh, Professor um, Mordechai Rottenberg, who recently won the Israel Prize in Israel. It was really a very unusual delegation, five of us. What year are we in? And we're now in 1980, because it took two years was to organize this. Yes, and we went off to years the ago. Kashmir. And we interviewed Patans in the orchards and asked them about their customs. Do they light candles on the Sabbath? Do they have um, a canopy for the wedding? Chupa. And, um, and when we left, we said, well, bye, we're going back to Israel now. They said, don't be so ridiculous. We are Israel. We are <laughs> fond of Israel, the children of Israel. Now, these people are anti-Zionist, but they... 
that we're Bani Israel. Why, why you know, you're not Israel. We're Israel. And um, it became a very fascinating um, journey. And I wrote a little bit about it and um, became really um, perhaps obsessed because it's my life's work. Yes. Well, Shalva, thank you very much for this introduction to the subject of your research on the lost ten tribes of Israel. And we're looking forward to uh, future interviews as each year, if it takes that long, it may accelerate global interest in the subject yes. of the lost tribes and the return of the lost ten tribes of Israel increases. And the number of people around the world who claim uh, ancestry from the lost tribes increases. And then I have a last question. How many people are we talking about? And if they were all going to come here, Israel's about the size of New Jersey. And we have a population density of Singapore. Where are you going to put everybody? How many people, has any, have any statistical studies been done to actually add up the number of people claiming there are relatives? How many people are we talking about? No, you have to distinguish, it will take a little bit of time, you have to distinguish from people who claim for themselves that they're lost Israelites and other people who claim for other people. Oh, okay. So, um, there, are some, there were some Christian missionaries who claim that the whole of the Korean people in Burma are lost tribes, but they themselves don't say this. Now, um, there's an, uh, there are variations. The Patans, who make up the majority of the Taliban today and are clearly anti-Zionist and anti-Israel, um, to put it mildly, um, they have no interest whatsoever coming to Israel, but they do say that they're in Israel. And recently I wrote an article for the Technical University in, in Zurich, uh, um, in Switzerland, that's where um, Einstein <laughs> graduated. And um, I received lots and lots of reactions on the internet from Patans all over the world, they also some in exile, and they're saying, yes, we hate Israel, but we agree with you that we're, we're the children of Israel. Shalva, thank you very much for this first fascinating mm -hmm. interview of the strange reality that you and I and anyone in the land of Israel lives in which evolves uh, hour by hour. And thanks to all our viewers and listeners Bye. for watching and listening. Bye.